as a light mage, where you just yank a homie yeah. out of a damage zone. Yep. <laughs> Uh, level nine, the scriptorium. Uh, you commissioned you commissioned the facility's hirelings to make a copy of a non-magical book. Requiring doing so requires a blank book. Okay. Oh, now it becomes fucking relevant. <laughs> oh Sorta, my god! But it doesn't do anything. You just make a non-magic. You make a copy of a non-magical book. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought. Never mind. It's not like a spell book. I. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Never mind. I just okay. Yep. These fucking books, dude. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, then you can craft a spell right. scroll. You commission the facility's hireling to scribe a spell scroll containing a cleric or a wizard spell of third level or lower. Uh, the facility has all the stuff they need. The crafting equipment section specifies how much time is needed to craft the scroll and the cost. Or you could have them do paperwork. You commissioned the facility's hirelings to create 50 copies of a broadsheet, pamphlet, or other loose leaf product. Uh, the work takes seven days and costs you one GP per copy. At no additional per cost. Per copy? Per copy, yeah. Brother. <laughs> so 50 GP at most. That's a lot of money to have your boys make some fly Some flyers. You're, <laughs> you're spending more money in materials than you are spending in work. Yes. Uh, at no additional cost of time and money, the facility's oh hirings can distribute the paperwork to one or more locations within 50 miles of your bestie. So you could just run a newspaper, I guess. I love that Wizards of the Coast have just reinvented capitalism. I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the train of thought is on that one, but yeah. Oh my god. Uh, what are your level five boys is the smithy. This one pretty much does what you think it can do. Uh, you can craft stuff that smith tools could craft, or you can make armaments, magic item armaments at level nine plus. The same as the other. That's cool. I like that. I mean, it's the same as the uh, whatever the other basic level five. Which one was it? It's the same effect, different category as the was it the library or something? Sanctuary. Oh, one yeah, true. One of them, yeah. So. Yeah, there there is one facility per magic type to make. So like Smithy does armaments. I think it was was it the li the library? No, which one does the? No, one of them did relics. Of course, now I can't. The reliquary. Reliquary, maybe. Yeah. Nope, wasn't that one. No. Oh. Uh, it was the sacristy. Did sacristy. I. Why do they choose that word? I don't. I don't. Because they already use sanctuary, I guess. I suppose it's just that is that is an, an old word to the point of it being so esoteric. Like you're like, what the? Fuck? Yeah. The stable. Um, you can. You can have one riding horse or camel and two ponies or two mules. Uh, the facility is big enough to house three large animals or two medium creatures occupy the same amount as a large creature. Uh, after a beast that can serve as a mount spends 14 days in the facility, all animal handling checks may, with respect to it have advantage. You can trade your animals. Can you should the trade order uh, your hirelings buy or sell one or more mounts at normal cost. Uh, keeping the ones in your, uh, you buy in your stable takes them seven days. The mounts and other animals in the player's handbook give standard pricing. You can sell a mount from your stable. The buyer pays 20% more than the standard price. The profit margin increases to 50% when you're level 13 and 100% when you're level 7. So you can just buy and hawk horses all day long. But yeah, I, I, sort, I sort of saw it like the, um, what do they call it? The, the Pokemon daycare? Uh, something like that, yeah. And then you can spend 2,000 GP to enlarge your facility and house six large animals. <laughs> so you can. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people that buy a stable and just turn into fucking horse jockeys. Yeah, well, because you're 100 xing your profit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why did they just reinvent capitalism? I, I, <laughs> I you know, I really couldn't tell you, but uh, yep. 
I guess because they figured your fucking adventures doesn't matter anyway. I don't know. I suppose so. <laughs> So then you have the store in between the dragon horde you're taking. You're like, oh, look, 500 gold. Yeah. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Uh, and then you have the storehouse, which is a level five bastion. It does the same thing as a stable, except you're selling generic trade goods instead of horses. Are you also 100xing your profit yes. margins? Yes. At level 17. Anyway. I okay. All right. All right. Uh, level 17 for both of them to, to double your profits, but yeah. So, yeah. Storehouse and stables are going to be, uh, you know, if you want to just be, I don't know, a grocery baron, there you go. Uh, level 9, you I can... I love reinventing feudalism. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. At level 9, you can make a teleportation circle, and you can summon a wizard to your uh, bastion and have them just... cast a, uh, a level four spell. Uh, if you're level 17 plus, they can cast a level eight spell for you. Uh, the spells caster is assumed to have all their stuff and material, uh, but if they need material components, you have to pay them for the material components they are using. Uh, they stay for two weeks or until they cast the spell. They will not defend the bastion and they fuck off if the bastion gets attacked. So you just summon up your buddy you know Jimbo the sorcerer and like hey you want to cast gate for yeah, me or you whatever just call up Morden Kanan and you're yeah. like hey bud I need some help he's like dude are you fucking kidding me right now it's four in the morning yeah uh and then he just stays at your house for two weeks eating your food and shit yeah he was, I was about to say <laughs> eating your food shit in your toilet yeah leaving his dirty socks on the couch yeah Pain uh, in my ass. Level nine, you could get a theater. I <laughs> don't have the chutzpah to read this whole one, but basically you could put on a performance and other players can help you. They can be the writer, the director, or a performer in the performance. Then you make a performance check. If you succeed, everyone gets a theater die, which is either a D6 and then it bumps to a D8 at level 13 and a D10 at level 17. And you could use the theater die like a Bardic Inspiration die. What uh, is the time limit on it? Uh, 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 forever. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, I see. Yeah. You cannot stack well, them. You can only have one. But yeah, there's no time limit. You just have a Bardic Inspiration die. So the theater also pretty strong. Or just looking at the party. Am I a joke to you? Uh, yeah, apparently, yes. Yes, you are. Uh, then you have the training area. Another level nine. And uh, basically, you get uh, you have a couple of different options of types of trainers. So, for example, you have a battle expert. When you take damage from... Uh, basically, you take the empower action. You train with the trainer. When you take damage from an attack made with an unarmed striker weapon, you could take a reaction to reduce the damage by a D4. Uh, or you could have the wow. tools expert, where you gain proficiency with a tool of your choice. Or you can have the weapons expert, where choose a kind of simple or martial weapon. If you aren't proficient, you gain proficiency. If you are proficient, you gain mastery. Oh. Yeah. Now, this only lasts for a week. Just kind of funny. Like, yeah, I had this guy show me how to use a spear and then I used it for a week, but now I need to go back to show about me <laughs> how to use the spear. <laughs> yeah, it's again. like, uh, I might need more training. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Uh, you know, fictionally kind of hilarious. Mechanically, I get it, but fictionally a little goofy. Uh, then another level nine, there's the trophy room. Uh, this is another research one. Uh, you do the research, you get three pieces of accurate information about the topic. It's another one of those. You commission the facility's higher leagues to research a topic of your choice. The topic can be a legend, a creature, or a famous object. The topic need not be directly related to items on display in the room. So that's why the whole getting a trophy from the Adventurers Guild just does nothing. <laughs> does it need to be related? I see. Yeah. I suppose you could maybe 
homebrew an idea where if they do something with a creature that they have a trophy of, they could get advantage or they could research a more powerful thing or something. I don't know. But yeah, rules is written. It don't do diddly dick. Uh, you know, that's a shame because I feel like you could have used that one to basically play like a monster hunter game, right? Like you can get yeah. monster bits and then you can turn those monster bits into special gear or weapons or armor or whatever. That's a lot of design, sir. Yeah, but like it'd be worth it. Yeah, but like that's a lot of work. <laughs> um, I guess. Or you can get a trinket trophy. You commission the hirelings to search for a trinket that might be of use. After seven days, the research concludes. Roll any die. That was funny how it said that. If the number is odd, they find nothing. If the number is even, they find a magic item. Roll on the implements common table, chapter seven, to determine what the magic item is. So they find you a common magic item. Just because. Can't wait for all those, all those magic, magic cloaks of billowing. Uh, yeah. Really put the room together. Uh, then you have the war room at level 17. This is one of the big boys. You have to have a fighting style feature or unarmored defense feature to make or to make the war room. You have a bunch of uh, loyal lieutenants that are veterans. Their, you know, stat block is a veteran. Um, they can issue. You can have them issue the recruit order and get you a small army of 100 dudes or a small. A small army. Yes. <laughs> of 100 dudes 100 guards um who will fight for you in a cause or reduce the number to 20 if you want them mounted on riding horses uh it costs you one gp per day to feed each guard and each horse yeah <laughs> uh wherever the army goes it must be lead led by you or one of your lieutenants or it disbands the army also disbands if it goes one day without being fed one day Otherwise, the army, army remains until it is destroyed or you command it to disband. So, yeah, you can have a small army. I kind of I like that they're like, you can't keep it like because I mean, you could, right? You kill a couple dragons. You'll keep that army for like a year. Yeah, but <laughs> I do really love the you can just mobilize an army against a dragon. I mean, it does. And, it does also say you can't issue the recruit order again until your current army disbands or is destroyed. So you can't go over 100 technically rules is written. No, but you could you could walk an army up to an ancient dragon, kick its ass with action economy. Yes. Say, all right, guys, you get to go home now and then go back and do it again the next day. <laughs> Although many of them will die. Look, that's fine. Many. Here's the thing, right? Many will die. Many of them will die. But you tell the ones who survive that they'll make extra money if they do survive. That is technically true. Sure. Yeah. Well, and then really, they're actually, only going to want to have to fight one dragon. Is that technically <laughs> true if you're paying them the same no matter what? Shh. Yeah, I'm just saying. Shh. <laughs> uh, I, I think this is the last level five one is a workshop. Basically, you.